Welcome everyone to my channel. My name is Andal and I'm an author and storyteller. Today's original story is the fifth chapter of Soulmates. Not available for purchase yet, but I thought I'd give you a preview. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with anyone who might love this content. I post stories weekly, so stay tuned. Please feel free to comment me and leave your suggestions down below to improve this story. So grab a glass of milk and your favorite cookie and sit back, relax, and enjoy this tale. Chapter 5 Lady Ruby sank down onto the worn wooden planks of her ship's deck behind a cluster of barrels. The salty sea air mingled with her tears as she buried her head into her knees, the fabric of her pirate clothes absorbing her quiet sobs. Hugging her knees tighter to her chest, she sought solace in the warmth of her own embrace amidst the overwhelming sadness that consumed her. It's impossible, Ruby thought to herself, her lip quivering as she fought to contain the torrent of emotions threatening to overflow. My feelings run too deep, revealing the soft side of me little by little. He needs to get a ship soon so that I can move on, but perhaps I won't be able to. I will miss him too much. This will be the last time I'll see him. Her hands pressed against her mouth, attempting to stifle the rising tide of sobs. I've never had feelings for a man before. Most I've been acquainted with only offered shallow flirtations. But Cutlass, he's different. There's sincerity in his every word and action, even as a thief. Resting her head on the curve of her knees, she traced her fingers along the path, where his touch had lingered on her cheek. I feel a profound sadness for him. This is perhaps that pirate's the first time to open up his heart to someone. As night descended, Ruby retreated to her cabin, her emotions draining her physical strength. She hoped in vain that the tears would cease, but they persisted, silently racking her body until exhaustion claimed her. I pray I will appear a complete wreck come morning, Ruby grumbled inwardly with a weary sigh. The following day, Ruby remained hidden in her cabin, avoiding any encounters with Cutlass. The thought of facing him again threatened to unravel her composure, triggering, triggering another flood of tears she wasn't prepared to confront. The day after that, she woke early, drawn by the allure of the impending sunrise. The deck was a quiet tableau, with only Arabella perched high in the crow's nest, and Marietta tending to the helm. Suddenly a presence interrupted her solitude, and Ruby felt the warmth of someone's shoulder rushing against hers. She turned to find Cutlass, his proximity unsettling, yet oddly comforting. Why does he insist on such closeness, even as, even as I maintain my s facade of indifference? She strained her posture, struggling con to conceal the turmoil within. Cutlass, she agreed with forced composure. It's a pleasant surprise to see you this fine morning. Likewise, Cutlass replied, his voice softer, gentler, gentler than her own. He turned to her, his lips curving into a faint smile. To her surprise, the corners of Ruby's lips twitched, threatening to reciprocate a smile into return. Hastily, she averted her gaze. Have you heard? You'll be leaving today, Cutlass sighed, a shadow of unease clouding his features. Aye. Marietta informed me yesterday, but it's for the best. We can't risk further complications by keeping our crews intertwined. As Cutlass spoke, Ruby's grip on the rail tightened, her facade of composure faltering beneath the weight of her emotions. The impending separation felt like being stabbed twice by a pirate's dagger in the heart. I suppose so, she sighed, a faint hint of emotion seeping into her voice. You must be looking forward to commanding your ship, your own ship again. Cutlass sighed, shaking his head uneasily. To be honest, I'm not. He gazed into her eyes, his eyes shimmering in the morning light. Have you been crying? Ruby tucked a stray lock of hair behind her ear. Her curiosity peaked. And what makes you say that? She inquired, her voice laced with intrigue. You would already know the reason why, Cutlass told her, his intense, unwavering gaze fixed upon her. I'll miss you. Will you as well miss me, Lady Ruby? Ruby let out a long, frustrated sigh. It's quite ridiculous to worry about me. Your focus should be on— He leaned in closer, causing Ruby's protest to fall on deaf ears. She could only stare up at him, stunned into silence as he leaned in even closer, his presence enveloping her. I'll take that as a yes, Cutlass whispered. He bit his lip, struggling to keep himself composed. He strained himself, directing his gaze, gaze towards the, the sunlit horizon. I should prepare my crew. When do we expect to arrive on land? Sometime between now and this afternoon, we replied with a nod, her voice barely above a whisper. I thank you once again. You've been so kind to save us from drowning in the sea's abyss. Ruby nodded. Yes, yes, 
Don't thank me too profusely. I fear my hospitality has been lacking during during your stay aboard. A wistful smile raced cut as his lips. I beg to defer. Our dinner together was a rare gift, one that I won't soon forget. Heat crept into Ruby's cheeks at the memory. She cleared her throat. Oh, yes, I suppose, but I was still rather reserved then. Cutha shrugged, his demeanor earnest. Perhaps, but for a moment that night I felt like glimpsed a connection to your heart. He folded his arms behind his back and disappeared below decks, leaving Ruby to grapple with an unsettling knot in her stomach. I wish our crews could find common ground. Ruby contemplated, a tired exhale escaping her lips. If only we remain together a while longer. But once he acquires a new ship, he'll vanish on another pirating voyage across the seas. Goodness, why do I feel so utterly miserable? When the afternoon unfurled its sails and painted the sky with bright blue hues, Arabella's voice rang out, announcing the sight of land on the horizon. Ruby's apprehension mounted as Cutlass and his crew emerged from the depths of the ship, readying themselves for departure. Their vessel glided gracefully into the harbor of Tamsin, a seaside town nestled on island-like terrain. Homes clung to the hillside like barnacles, while the bustling shops congregated on the flat ground below. The landscape appeared parched, devoid of verdant foliage, leaving ample space for the vibrant pulse of town life to thrive. As Ruby's crew prepared the gangplank, she seized the opportunity to approach Cutlass urgently. Please, she implored, her voice tinged with urgency, allow me to accompany you to ensure the smooth ac acquisition of a new vessel. Cutlass nodded, an innocent smile playing at the corners of his lips. Of course, Ruby. Together they descended the gangplank and navigated the streets of Tamsin. Ruby remained close to Cutlass's side, her gaze wandering over the bustling crowds. She couldn't help but feel a twinge of self-consciousness -conscious amidst the elegantly attired woman of the era, dressed beautifully in their dresses and bonnets. She realized the dis disparity between her appearance and their sophistication. Her higher station demanded a more refined attire, a fact that now weighed heavily upon her. As they wove through the crowds of people, Ruby found herself overwhelmed by the chaotic currents of the town life, colliding with passerby on all sides. Cutlass, sensing her distress, halted suddenly, turning to her with a reassuring gesture. His hand found hers, his touch offering a steady anchor amidst the chaos. "'Stay close to me,' he urged, his voice gently at firm. "'I'll ensure you don't get jostled about.' Ruby's cheeks flushed at the thought of him being protective over her, her heart fluttering at the unexpected tenderness. He did quite a fine job at keeping her safe, helping her sidestep around large mounts of people. But what stood out to her most, more, was the feel of his hand in hers, the rough fingers offering her solace in the midst of the crowds. She held onto his hand tighter, as they approached a shop in the distance, where the owner of a vessel business resided. Cutlass approached the proprietor, a weathered old man with a mass of shaggy hair, his demeanor mirroring the ruggedness of a life spent at sea. To Ruby's astonishment, Cutlass maintained his hold on her hand, daring not to let his fingers slip from hers. The man's eyes narrowed, narrowed as they met with Cutlass's. Cutlass moved forward. "'Excuse me, sir. Do you possibly have any ships to sell?' the man scoffed. "'Not to pirates, of course,' he told him. Before Cutlass could protest, the man went inside his shop and slammed the door shut behind him. Cutlass stood aghast. "'That's never happened to me before,' Cutlass said, blinking at the sight. He was about to head toward the door, towards the door, his fists clenched as if to teach that man a lesson, when Ruby pulled him backward. "'Please, let's not waste our time quarreling with an old man,' Ruby advised. "'We'll try the next place. See if they will sell any vessels to us instead.' But whichever shop they went to, the shopkeepers kept coming up with lame excuses. "'Sorry, we don't have any vessels. We're out of stock. I would never dare to sell any of my well-crafted ships to a pirate. As you see, I only sell ships to wise and rich men who dress nicely, not pirates.' By late afternoon, Cutlass and Ruby found themselves wandering, exhausted by failure in the heat, yet Cutlass's fingers still remained intertwined with Ruby's, a silent testament to their shared determination. "'It's no use,' Cutlass admitted with a heavy sigh. "'This town harbors a deep-seated grudge against pirates, regardless of their intentions,' Ruby nodded, her gaze falling to her worn boots. "'I wish our luck had been kinder,' she murmured, ruefully. Suddenly, Cutlass's expression brightened. He gasped, 
Oh, wait, I do know a place, he exclaimed, turning to Ruby with renewed hope. Perking up at his words, Ruby met his gaze with eager anticipation. Pardon me, Cutlass sighed, inching closer to her. Ruby's heart thundered at their closeness. But it's quite far. It's more than a month's journey. Ruby blinked, an excitement coursing through her. Then, then, that means we can spend more time with one another. What are you proposing we do? She inquired, rolling her shoulders up and back. Cutlass nodded slowly. My father owns another ship. His most prized possession, the victory. But it was such... He was such a selfish pirate that he didn't want anyone to use it often, so he kept it to himself and concealed it somewhere where it would be safe from the hands of pirates. Ruby blinked. Um, but may I ask why he would do that? Kava shrugged with a hand on his hip. I don't know. My father was quite an odd gentleman. He never made much sense to me. Perhaps the vessel was his greatest treasure. He always told me everyone had their greatest possession, and I was his... I wish he'd said it was me back when he told me about the victory when I was a young boy. But why would a selfish pirate say that? Ruby nodded curtly, grasping his arm. Then? We find it! Cutlass laughed at the thought. Well, you see, your crew would become quite exhausted with mine by the time we would reach it. My advice is to visit another seaside town and try once more. Ruby shook her head. No, I believe we should find the ship but her words trailed off as her gaze drifted through the crowds to figure in the distance a young man in a distinctive red coat, stealthily pilfering apples from a nearby shop, his actions unnoticed by the oblivious shop owner. Ruby's eyes narrowed at the sight. Goldtooth. Perhaps he went here because this was one of the closest sea towns. As Goldtooth's eyes met with Ruby's, he flashed a grin that sent a shiver down Ruby's spine. His expression... His expression remained unwavering until it shifted when he noticed her companion. Cutlass's hand instinctively tightened around the hilt of his cutlass at the sight of Goldtooth, poised to draw the weapon at the slightest vocation. <laughs> Goldtooth laughed, his bubbling and sly amusement giving Ruby the chills. Ah, so we meet again! I'm shocked. You two are quite cozy these days. Last time I met this fine young gentleman, you rejected him. But now the heart has grown fonder, does it not, sweet Ruby? Don't call me that, Ruby protested, her rage evident. Her gaze flickered down to the hand entwined with hers, a surge of conflicting emotion welling within her. She was about to slip out her fingers from Cutlass's fingers, but he only grasped her tighter. What's your business here? Cutlass demanded suspiciously, becoming quite defensive as he took his place in front of Ruby. She wanted to gasp. A man was actually defending her, for once, in her life in front of Goldtooth. Goldtooth shrugged nonchalantly. We're here to replenish supplies. Maybe steal a few valuables. We're here to replenish supplies. Maybe steal a few valuables. I hear Tamsin has quite the collection of diamonds. Goldtooth took a bite of his apple. With a careless toss, he discarded his half-eaten apple. Too bad. You're not a thieving pirate. It's quite sad. You'd be so tempted to get your hands on such a treasure. Without warning, he drew his cutlass, the glint of steel flashing in the sunlight. He charged towards Cutlass, aiming his weapon at Cutlass's side. But before Goldtooth could strike a blow, Cutlass had his weapon unsheathed by his side, blocking Goldtooth's perilous move. Ruby let out an exasperated sigh at the brewing conflict that had but that had begun. She watched the, the two young men's feet danced as they clashed swords with one another. But her frustration turned to alarm as a firm arm encircled her waist, a cold blade pressing against her throat. Ruby scoffed, her defiance evident. You think you could kill me so easily? With swift precision, she retaliated, driving her elbow into her captor's midsection and seizing control of the dagger poised at her throat. As her assailant Recoiled in surprise, she pulled out her cutlass, engaging in a fierce sword fight with Goldtooth's, with Goldtooth's crew member that echoed through the narrow streets. It wasn't too long before she disarmed her opponent, sending the coward running away down the streets. Lady Ruby glanced around herself, confusion painting her expression, as she scanned her surroundings. Where are Cutlass? Goldtooth! Cutlass heaved a weary sigh, pausing momentarily to catch his breath, his hands braced on his knees as he surveyed his opponent. Is it unnecessary to run? Goldtooth spun on his heel with practiced grace, meeting Cutlass's gaze with a smug grin. 
Oh, it most certainly is. Wearing down my adversary is all part of the game. They resumed their fight, the clash of their swords reverberating through the cobbled streets. A small crowd had gathered, drawn by the spectacle unfolding before them. Cutlass's grip tightened on a sword, his, movement gr his movements growing more aggressive as he pressed the attack. What are your intentions? Cutlass snapped, his blood boiling with fury. Why do you persist in pursuing Lady Ruby? Goldtooth's smirk widened into a malicious grin, his eyes gleaming with ill intent. I love her. Of course, he taunted, parrying Cutlass's blow with ease. But surely there's more to it, Cutlass persisted, closing the distance between them with each exchange. He tried striking Goldtooth in the side, but he only found himself blocked. The buccaneer only scoffed. Then I guess she hasn't told you the truth about us. Cutlass almost stumbled, but resumed fighting. Pardon me, what do you mean? Goldtooth cracked an ugly grin, showing off his dirty teeth. She's my betrothed. Cutlass's world spun at the revelation, his heart sinking like a stone as he struggled to regain his footing. Before he could react, Goldtooth rammed the back of his sword into Cutlass's stomach, sending Cutlass's weapon to fly out of his fingers. He fell to his knees with a sharp intake of breath, far from reaching his weapon. With the tip of his, of his sword poised menacingly beneath Cutlass's chin, Goldtooth loomed over him, a predatory gleam in his eyes. I must say, I must say, you are quite a fierce fighter. I'll give you that, he remarked, his tone dripping with disdain. But you sword fight like a young schoolboy. Cutlass only scoffed, his eyes narrowing, as he tried to pr process the sudden turn of events. Why? You, out of all gentlemen, be Ruby's betrothed. How come she never told me this? Goldtooth shrugged. Ah, oh, persuasion, really. My dear rival, he replied with a twisted grin. Our family saw fit to arrange our union, much to my delight and her dismay. Sadly, though, she vanished before our wedding day to claim her father's pirating business. Her father didn't seem to trust my father in the end, so he found a way to have Ruby flee from this engagement. Oh, but I wish she didn't run. She's quite a pretty girl, but mark my words, Cutlass, she will be mine. A surge of defiance rose within Cutlass, fueled by a newfound resolve. You would probably manipulate her if you ever planned to marry her, Cutlass told him through clenched teeth. You are no match for Ruby, Goldtooth smirked. Are you trying to tell me that you want to be the man for Ruby? He burst out laughing, clutching his stomach as he did so. Ha! That is one of the most absurd things I've ever heard. An immature man who seems to have no manners. Surely Ruby would be displeased. At first, she was, Cutlass contemplated to himself. But then I saw her, getting emotional over my departure, and I can't help but wonder what she really feels about me. If only she weren't so reluctant to share her true feelings. I know, Cutlass said with a curt nod, but I am of noble lineage, just as you are. One day, when we warm up to one another, I would be the right partner for her. And what makes you say that? Cutlass blushed slightly. I think Ruby and I might be soulmates. Goldtooth pointed his sword closer to Cutlass's chin, his expression growing cold. You cling to false hope, he spat, his tone laced with scorn. Ruby is as unyielding as the sea itself, her heart as cold and unforgiving as the depths below. She never has nor will ever open her heart to any man who encounters her. So don't be mistaken, Cutlass. That there are feelings underneath that cold facade. You'll only be heartbroken in the end. That's why she will be my wife one day. So you don't have to deal with a cold-hearted woman. Cutlass's shoulders tensed. Perhaps you're right, he conceded with a hint of defiance. But I refuse to accept defeat without a fight. And one day when the time is right, I will prove myself worthy of her affections. Cutlass's fury ignited like a tempest unleashed. With lightning speed, he lunged towards Goldtooth, seizing the arm that wielded the menacing blade. Goldtooth's eyes, wi Goldtooth's eyes widened in surprise at the sudden attack, his attempts to stab Cutlass thwarted by Cutlass's relentless assault. Goldtooth's blade slipped from his fingers as Cutlass thrust Goldtooth to the cobblestone road. Cutlass belly flopped on top of him, wrestling him until Goldtooth's wrists were in Cutlass's clutches. Don't you ever lay one finger on Lady Ruby ever again, he warned, resting a firm arm over Goldtooth to prevent him from escaping, or you'll regret it for the rest of your life. Goldtooth's lips curled into a sly, sly smirk, his taunts aimed at unraveling Cutlass's composure. Ah, the lovesick pirate, he jeered, 
his smile growing more sly, struggling to mask the blush creeping across his cheeks. Cutlass diverted his gaze, his heart pounding with a mixture of frustration and longing. The mention of Lady Ruby never failed to bring a warmth that spread through his chest and cheeks. It was so difficult to hide his feelings for her. He seized a thick coil of rope that had been wrapped around a wooden column to tie up a donkey. Cutlass used it to tie Goldtooth's wrist to the column, ensuring he remained securely restrained. Retrieving his own sword and claiming Goldtooth's weapon for his own, he watched as the malicious pirate frowned in dismay. Cutlass shrugged innocently. I am a pirate! I can't help it! Goldtooth growled loudly as Cutlass bolted down the streets, laughing with victory. He was about to return back to where he'd left Ruby, but he found her missing, nowhere in sight. A sense of apprehension gnawed at his conscience. No, I failed to keep my promise. I should be protecting her, ensuring she's by my side. But then his eyes drifted over to a skirmish unfolding nearby, a fierce battle with deadly weapons involved. Lady Ruby, along with Marietta and Stormcaller, were fighting with multiple members from Goldtooth Grew. He shuddered. They're outnumbered. Terribly outnumbered. Marietta paced the deck, her steps echoing in the press of heat as her forehead began to sweat. What was taking her captain and Cutlass so long? She folded her arms behind her back and resumed her, rela her restless pacing. Arabella descended from the crow's nest, her concerned gaze immediately fixating on Marietta's troubled expression. Marietta, you don't look well, she observed, her voice filled with genuine worry. Marietta nodded, her mind already racing with thoughts of potential conflict. I think I may need to check on Ruby. I fear that they might be involved in a conflict with rival pirates. Let me come with you, Arabella offered, a glimmer of hope glistening in her eyes. Marietta shook her head her eyes glancing around at Cutlass's crew sitting around, wiping their foreheads of sweat while maintaining their distance from Ruby's crew. No, I must go alone. I don't want you to get hurt. Be in charge of the ship while I'm gone. Marietta turned to descend the gangplank when a thick hand wrapped around her wrist. Surprised, she turned to see Stormcaller before her, his eyes filled with a mix of fear and compassion. They had not spoken all that time they'd been on the ship for fear of what Ruby and Cutlass would say about them bonding with one another. Marietta shook her head, trying to slip her fingers out of his grip, but he remained firm. Stay with the crew. Watch over them while I'm gone. Stormcaller only shook his head. No. Let me accompany you. I fear something may happen to you as well. Marietta nodded hesitantly. Well, then, I believe it wouldn't hurt to bring you along. She descended the gangplank, but he still held on to her, which was quite strange to her. As they reached the bottom, his fingers intertwined with hers. The gentle touch sent a thrill of excitement down Marietta's spine. Too much? he asked her, glancing down at their in intertwined fingers and back into her eyes. She shook her head. Oh, um, not at all. He, sh he nodded slowly. Where to first? I'm assuming you would know this town better than I do? Marietta smiled nervously. I've been here a few times, but I haven't memorized everything quite well yet. I do know that all the different shops lie to the right. Stormcaller nodded, cracking a faint smile. Then, we'll do as you say. Lead the way. Marietta nodded as they walked side by side, hand in hand down the cobblestone road. She couldn't help but feel butterflies begin to flutter inside her stomach. Did he smile? I've never seen him smile. He's always been qu quite reserved. Stormcaller held on to her a little tighter, squeezing her hand gently as they strolled along. She felt she was burning up by the heat and the warm feeling that was spreading throughout her whole body at the touch. Has he been waiting all this time to hold hands with me? Marrier thought to herself, a wave of guilt washing over her. Poor thing. He had to stay away from me. Perhaps he was avoiding my... Perhaps he was craving my touch. As they neared the chaotic part of town, Stormcaller drew nearer to her, keeping a watchful eye on their surroundings. Suddenly, they halted in their stroll, their eyes glancing over at a few of Goldtooth's pirates fighting with Lady Ruby. Marietta let out a gasp. She's outnumbered, Marietta told Stormcaller, grasping his arm. We must, ask th we must act this instant, Stormcaller nodded. They both drew out their weapons, joining the skirmish that had taken place along the side of the road. The clash of steel reverberated through the air, drawing the attention of onlookers, who gasped at the intensity of the conflict. Marietta fought with fierce determination, her focus unwavering as she defended her comrades. In the midst of the chaos, Marietta watched as Cutlass approached, grabbing one of Goldtooth's pirates and pinning him to the ground. 
It was Goldtooth's first mate. Cutlass pulled out his dagger and brought it close to the pirate's neck. Retreat, or your captain and this pirate disappear, he shouted, his eyes scanning the group of malicious pirates. I have your captain held captive, and if you leave now, you can go to him. The group of pirates sheathed their weapons and departed from their sight. Marietta watched as Cutlass grabbed Ruby's hand firmly. For a moment, she thought Ruby blushed at the contact. Quickly, Cutlass urged. Now is the chance to run before they return. With a sense of relief washing over her, Marietta followed the captain's lead, her hand still intertwined into with storm colors once more, as they made their hasty retreat through the crowded streets, leaving the chaos behind them. As they fled, Marietta couldn't ignore the warmth of storm colors protective grip intertwined with hers. The faint smile tugged at her lips. But their swift pace was abruptly halted as Stormcaller brought him and Marietta to a sudden stop, his senses alert to an unseen danger. Marietta's heart skipped a beat as she watched Cutlass and Ruby ascend the gangplank. What was Stormcaller waiting for? Is something the matter? Marietta nervously asked, trying to figure out Stormcaller's intentions. In a split second, danger materialized in the form of a slashing pirate's blade aimed towards Marietta's chest. Stormcaller enveloped her waist, pivoting as he pulled Marietta close. The sword slashed along the side of his chest and waist. He winced in pain as he and Marietta fell to their knees. Instantly, he pulled out his cutlass, slashing the other pirate across the chest. The pirate, thrown off guard and in pain, fell to the ground, looking almost lifeless as the cutlass dropped out of his hand. Stormcaller began to fall forwards, if it hadn't been for Marietta, who turned around in time to grab his strong shoulders with her hands. There were tears in her eyes as she looked at Stormcaller's expression, and his shirt stained with the blood that began to spill from his wound. Her heart swelled with gratitude and disbelief. He saved me. He purposely saved my life. Why? Stormcaller, Marietta implored, her voice trembling with urgency. Stay with me. Stay conscious. Please. Tears welled in her eyes as she cradled his cheeks in her trembling hands. A trembling hand, her touch a gentle, a tender caress against his smooth skin. He leaned into her hand, slowly closing his eyes for a moment to savor her gentle fingers against his skin. And Marietta's heart thundered in her chest. She didn't know why this man was so fond of her. He had an unexpectedly shown up one day, along with his dirty and naughty crew, leading the fight on decks. But when he had approached her, he looked almost afraid to fight. She wasn't sure whether she would pull out her cutlass or not. They had stared into each other's eyes for a long moment before fighting. That was the first time Marietta had felt there was a connection between them. Now here he was, weeks later, defending her and craving her touch. Marietta tried to hold back a sob, but it was slipping out. Why? She asked, tears slipping down her hot cheeks. Why did you think to save my life? Stormcaller opened his eyes for a moment, his eyes dark pools of sincerity and pain. Because I couldn't bear to lose you, he confessed softly, his words a whispered vow that stirred something deep within her soul. Although his pain was painted across his weary expression, his eyes appeared dreamy, especially when he leaned his cheek into her hand more, a faint smile beginning to form on his lips. Mary to blink back tears. Can you stand? I need you to help me. Stormcaller nodded gently as Marietta came around on Stormcaller's side, putting her protective arm around his back. They both stood together. Stormcaller often faltered in his walk, but with Marietta's help, they walked safely up the gangplank. Cutlass, who had been about to go down the gangplank to retrieve, yeah, to retrieve Stormcaller and Marietta, seemed quite surprised at his first mate's injury. What? What happened? he asked striding over to Marietta to approach them. Marietta tried not to sob in front of the crew, as they all stared wide-eyed at her. He was hurt. He protected me from one of Goldtooth's pirates. He saved me, and I better save his life in return. He, she turned to Arabella, standing off to the side. Arabella, please retrieve some clean bandages. I need to tend to his wound. Arabella nodded as she, Marietta, and Stormcaller climbed below decks. The dimly lit confines of Stormcaller's bedchamber greeted them, the air heavy with a scent of salt and sweat. With gentle hands, Marietta guided Stormcaller to his bed, his pained expression mirrored by the creases of worry etched across her brow. He turned to the side where his wound was to face Marietta. Marietta panicked. No, no! It'll be painful if you lean on that side, she said, guiding him to gently rest on his back. She helped him sit upright as she carefully unbuttoned his coat and lifted his shirt to reveal the wound. The sight of the cut made Marietta's stomach turn with unease, but she pushed aside her own discomfort. 
thankfully hadn't been too deep. With meticulous precision, Marietta sat on the edge of his bed, diligently tending to his wound, her careful fingers mindfully helping him, just as she sta started wrapping bandages around the wounded era. She noticed, out of the corner of her eye, Stormcaller was staring at her, watching her with curious eyes as she contemplated her task. All done, she announced, as Arabella came in to give Stormcaller a new white shirt. Arabella left, leaving them both in silence. Marietta swallowed and rose to her feet. I should get going since I'm no longer needed here. But Stormcaller's grip on her arm halted her retreat. He pulled her back into a seat next to him. No, he told her, his gaze intense and longing. Please stay. With me. I really need the company. Marietta stared at him with shocked eyes, but only nodded his fingers brushed against her hairline, tucking a loose strand of hair out of Marietta's face. Marietta slightly trembled at how close they were to one another. She'd never seen him like this, so longing, desperate to touch her. She didn't even know he had that desire. You are so beautiful, Marietta, he murmured, his words like a soft caress against her skin. There are so many dirty pirates, but you stand out among all of them. Marietta blinked, a sense of heat rushing up to her cheeks. Oh, I never expected you would say such a thing. Marietta's eyes glanced over to the doorway. I must get going. I should let you rest. Stormcaller swallowed quietly, shaking his head. His insistence on her company tugged at her heartstrings. No, it would be even more painful than this wound if you left. Tears welled up in Marietta's eyes as she felt Stormcaller's fingers caress her cheek. She put her hand on top of his, smiling lightly at the touch. He smiled in return, his fingers moving gently, as if tracing patterns on her cheek. I know this is an odd inquiry, Stormcaller told her. But how old are you, Marietta? Marietta offered a smile. I'm fifteen, but I'll be sixteen a few weeks. Why do you ask? Stormcaller sighed uneasily, a flicker of unease flickering across his features. I thought you were my, at least my age. You seem so much older. Marietta's laughter danced like music in the air. I thank you. May I ask how old you are? He cracked a faint smile. I just turned seventeen a month ago. At least it's not too big of an age gap. Marietta nodded. I'm glad. She glanced down at her lap and back into Stormcaller's eyes. I think I was hurt for a good reason. He confessed softly, his eyes sparkling in the faint light. Maria raised an eyebrow, curiosity peaked. And what's that? His smile grew wider, his eyes sparkling with gentle affection. So I could spend more time with you. Ruby paced back and forth across the deck, her arms folded neatly behind her back, as she and her crew prepared to leave. Marietta and Stormcaller, Ruby thought uneasily. I feel so bad for them. If only Cutlass hadn't dragged me in front, we would have prevented that accident from happening. But at last, Marietta gets to be with the one she likes. Cutlass approached Ruby on her side. Ruby frowned, although her heart thundered at how close he was. Ruby, please tell me the truth, he told her, his eyes searching. You can't be called to betroth. Please tell me it's not true. Ruby sighed heavily, her gaze falling to the sea below. I'm afraid it is, she confessed, her voice heavy with regret. Goldtooth's father wanted his son to marry me. I don't know what their intentions were, but I knew that by having this marriage, my family and I would be manipulated by Goldtooth and his father. I'm sorry, I should have told you, but the truth hurt. I wanted to tell you, eventually. Cutlass's expression softened with understanding. It's all right, I forgive you, he assured her, his voice gentle. If I were you, I would have kept that quiet as well. Cutlass glanced around him and gazed back at Ruby. At one point, did you ever, perhaps, have feelings for him? Ruby's scoff echoed across the deck, a sound laced with defiance. Have feelings for him? Ridiculous! She exclaimed, her voice tinged with indi indignation. I knew he was an idiot by the time I first met him. I wanted to slap him so hard in the face by the time he proposed. But I knew it was an arranged marriage, so I had to accept. Thankfully, my father helped me find a way out of it. You felt deep star for letting me be involved in such a mess. Cutlass's smile was like a beacon of warmth in the darkness, his eyes soft as they met hers. So, then, have you ever loved a man, then? He asked softly. Ruby shrugged, a sense of vulnerability flickering in her gaze. I liked many of the boys that grew up around my town when I was younger, but I've never had any deep feelings for someone. Why do you inquire such a question? Cutlass's touch was gentle against her cheek, his fingers warm. Warm against her skin. Do you? Perhaps. 
have feelings for me? Frightened, Ruby slapped him in the face. Don't you dare try to flirt with me, Captain Cutlass! I- But before she could protest further, Cutlass grasped her by the shoulders, bringing her in so close that she could hardly breathe. Her shocked eyes glanced up into his beautiful, deep blue eyes. You look at me with those eyes every time, Cutlass remarked, with a hint of amusement, dancing in his voice. Those love-like, yet confused eyes. You kiss me every time. Ruby's breath caught in her throat, her pulse racing as she struggled to break free from his grasp, but he only held on tighter. Ruby sighed uneasily. Cutlass, I need to speak with you about some important matters, she managed to stammer out. Cutlass nodded, his hands still on her shoulders. All right, I'm listening. Ruby's impatience was palpable as she scoffed, her frustration evident. Can you release me so I can retrieve something? Cutlass complied, withdrawing his hands with a small nod. Certainly. What is it you want to tell me? With a hint of annoyance, Ruby reached into her pocket to pr produce a folded parchment. She handed it to Cutlass as he inspected it with curiosity, his brows furrowing as he ex examined the contents. An invitation, he whispered. He glanced over at the letter and into her eyes. To a party? The expression he had on his face suddenly made her burst out laughing. Instantly, she caught herself bringing a hand to her mouth. Cutlass stared at her, his amusement evident. Did did you think I was funny? He asked, his smile growing bigger. Ruby only groaned. Enough of this flattery. Just after when we ba went back on the ship, I just remembered the invitation that was tucked away in my ship. My mother and father sent it out to me in advance so that I could have it with me before I departed. They want me to attend. I will love to see them again, but I know it would only interrupt our journey to find your father's ship. No worries, Cutlass interjected with a sh reassuring grin. This isn't a race. We have all the time in the world, Ruby nodded slowly. And what I was about to say was, I'm going to need a man to accompany me, so let the boys think I'm taken, because surely they'll flock around me when they see me bombarding me with questions about dancing and going on walks with them. I need you to be the man, Cutlass blinked, his expression growing softer as he processed her request. You want me to accompany you? Ruby nodded anxiously. Yes, but it's quite an absurd idea. You would never want to accept. Too bad. I might have to go alone and slap all the faces of those boys who get too close to me. Cutlass panicked, grasping her arm. No, no, please. I would like to come. His eyes widened on her words. I would love to accompany you. Ruby strained herself. Good. I thank you. But once you accept, you do realize that you must keep mannerisms. One mess up can make you look like a fool. You don't want everyone to find out that you're a pirate. They'd be horrified by the idea. That means I must wear something more suitable for the occasion, Gretel said, examining his outfit, comprised of a white shirt and a leather vest, alongside a belt and a satchel. Lady Ruby nodded, reaching out to touch his shoulders for a moment, brushing away specks of dirt on his sleeve. Her fingers became excited at the contact, and she gently touched his broad shoulders. Why did this have to feel so good? She drew nearer, taking in a scent. Immediately, her eyes widened, caught off guard, by the wonderful aroma. Cutlass! She cried, her excitement evident. You smell so good! Cutlass's awkward response only seemed to deepen Ruby's amusement. I do? He asked nervously. I merely asked Marietta if there was some way I could smell good in front of you. Marietta is the queen of perfumes. Ruby nodded, taking in a scent once more. I love sandal. Accidentally, she leaned in too far, her chest falling against Cutlass, but Cutlass must have mistaken her accident to be her true intentions, as he wrapped his arms around her, brought her in close. Ruby wasn't sure what to do. She didn't know if she should wrap her arms around him in return, or break free from the hug. A warmth flowed through her, making her cheeks feel so hot. She'd never been loved so innocently by a man. For some reason, it felt good to be loved, good to feel that someone actually cared for her. All these years she wanted to be a tough woman, independent and free to live her destiny. But now she wanted this man more than ever. This had been the first time she'd longed for a man in her life. I'm glad you're not going yet, she thought to herself, wishing she could sigh with relief. You asked me if I would miss you. But no, I would long for you and I wish we could be with each other forever. I feel so bad for slapping you. What a fool I am for doing that to the man I loved. I really admire you, Cutlass. I'm just afraid to admit my feelings. I'm just afraid to commit, because 
I'm afraid this love could end one day in heartbreak. No. I have to deal with those terrible emotions. Ruby withdrew from Cutlass, trying to maintain her composure, but it was faltering. If you'll excuse me, she told him, feeling quite dizzy. I must go. I don't feel very well. She turned to depart, but Cutlass grasped her hand. Ruby turned to him, her cheeks turning rosy pink to see him smile. Then, if you don't feel well, let me take care of you, he told her gently, the softest words he had ever spoken to her in the time they'd met. To be continued.